Hello, everybody on the internet who is following this. Uh, my name is Morton. This is Show and Tell. And today I have Ali Nimmons with me as my special guest. Hello, Ali. Hi, Morton. This is so cool. Can you can you tell people who you are and what you do? Yeah, uh, my name is Ali Nimmons. I am the community manager at WP Buffs. Uh, which is a fairly new position. I just started a little while ago. Um, and basically my job is to be friends with people and to do fun stuff like this and to create content that helps people to learn how to use WordPress and um, all those other kind of fun things. So yeah, I've been using WordPress for like a super, super, super long time and um, now I'm in this like dream job where I don't have to deal directly with clients anymore, but I still get to use and deal with WordPress all the time. Um, yeah, that's, that's the majority of what I do. Thing. Very yeah. WordPress job. Be like, what, are, <laughs> what do you do? People, people. <laughs> like people interaction yeah. type things. Yeah, which is awesome. Cause like, if you'd asked me a year ago, I would not describe myself as a people person. Um, I'm I'm very much an introvert, very much, you know, prefer to sit in and not do anything than go out and be around people. Um, and now my job is nothing but people, but thankfully it's all people that I like. Um, I can kind of pick and choose, if you will, who I decided to hang out with on my work time. So right. it's, it still it's, kind of fits that part of my personality. It's funny you say that because to me, you're a very people person. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're very social and tricking very, everyone. So, so you've been doing a good job at scamming people into thinking you are if you're not. But yeah. I think that's also common. You see a lot of people in online communities who are extroverted introverts or yeah. introverts that are very good at pretending to be extroverts or something yeah. like that. Something like that. Which is, yeah, it's bizarre because like I did not think I didn't realize how much of an impact like WordCamps had on me until we didn't have them anymore. Um, and and just kind of having this mentality of like, I'm not gonna be able to go see people. Like mm -hmm. expect that at least once a month or so I would be able to go to an event and see people and now I can't. And I'm like, this this hidden extrovert inside of me is like now like starving. And I'm like, it's just so confusing. I don't know what's going on. Um, but yeah, I do, we were just kind of chatting a little bit about how I do like that people have, pivoted to doing so many things online. And I'm really excited. I mean, we, we work in a very um, creative environment, whether you are a creative person or not, mm -hmm. you're all very creative people. I have not met a single person who works within this space who's not a creative minded person. And so I'm really excited to see what kind of events like this people do in lieu of WordCamp so that we can all kind of stay connected to each other. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of things that have changed. And yeah. it's interesting to see how, it'll be interesting, like I said, to see how this evolves and what happens eventually, some way or another, will come out of this current situation. Mm -hmm. And then how do we then integrate this need for in-person actually being around other people, mm -hmm. congregating in large masses in rooms, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> with this, oh, you know, we can actually do this quite effectively online without having to fly across the planet to do so. And very faster. Yeah, it's it, it's it's weird. I, I I find myself in the same position as you that um I find conferences exhausting because they're very intense when you're there. You're talking to people all the time and everything, but then the lack of conferences. It's also like, what is something missing in my life? This ability to yeah. go out and just randomly meet people and have a conversation with them. Like I met you yeah. through random conference stuff, right? Well, I met exactly. you online probably before on Twitter, but it was like in a conference setting that it was like, now nah, I'm going to go sit yeah, and talk the, to this person. The, the, you are actually, I think I've told you this before, but you are, very, you are actually the very first person I ever saw speak at a WordCamp. I saw you at WordCamp Miami a couple of years ago and you were like the first talk of the day and that was my first WordCamp. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. So bar set very, very high. Um, but I don't think we actually met each other until WordCamp US last year. 
that yeah. I think was the first time that we actually like had a conversation with each other. And I was like, yeah. wow, this is so neat. But yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of the power of this community is like, you can know somebody or feel like you know somebody for like years <laughs> through the internet and through these conferences and stuff without ever actually having had like a full on conversation. Yeah. But it's not, it's not like weird, you know? I know it's, I know. it's, it's neat. Like Kenny says, even introverts need other people. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Maybe true. one at a time interactions rather than a large gathering. It's very true. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I keep trying to imagine we'll come to a, f a future where a conferences will happen again. We'll, everyone will come in and be like, I'm going to meet all the people. And then they'll all stand in corners and talk to their <laughs> own friends, <laughs> not exactly. interact with anyone. Because they're like, I don't know how to do this anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, going back to the physical events is going to be it's going to be super interesting. I think I think there's going to be this huge surge of people wanting to go and then realize like, oh, I actually they don't need to be this big and this intense. You know, we can kind of level it back out. <laughs> so, Ali, yeah. you have something for show and tell. <laughs> I do. Um, so, part of my job right now is making. WordPress tutorials for our WP Buffs um, YouTube channel, which is super fun and exciting. And brief backstory, because I think this is kind of interesting. My, I am a formally trained actor. That's what I did from five years old up until college. Um, so I, in a classroom setting for many years, was taught how to talk, and uh -huh. basically nothing else, how to use my voice in different sorts of ways, right? And I seriously, up until about 20 years old, thought I was going to be an actor or a director. Combine that with when I was in high school, I was in this intensive academic program called the International Baccalaureate Program, which is a really fancy way of saying like super nerdy kids. Mm -hmm. um, and we had something called like higher level and standard level courses. So you could take, you could choose which classes to take, higher level and standard level. The higher level classes are like just more intense, uh, more thorough. You take a harder test at the end of the at the end of the system. And so I took a two year long higher level film course where I learned how to edit film. And I actually remember having this struggle in like senior year where I was like, I don't know if I want to go for theater or if I want to become a film editor. Like I seriously considered going to college to edit film and I chose theater, didn't really work out, found WordPress, here I am. But editing these videos, every day I wake up and I'm like, I cannot believe that these three things that I love so much, which is like performing with my voice, editing film, and WordPress have now come together and somebody is like, I'm gonna pay you money to just sit in a room and do all these things that you like to do. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's how it's supposed what, to work, right? What magic button did I push <laughs> to like have all of my interests just like magically converge with each other? So I find this incredibly gratifying and I'm incredibly grateful like every day that this is my job. Um, so yeah, I just thought that that was kind of cool because this isn't really something that I just sort of like kind of fell into or like, oh, that would be fun. Like I like dreamed for a long time to be able to do this and now I can do it. So hopefully um, we do really well with this channel because my entire life is a lie if we don't. <laughs> um. <laughs> Come on, it's YouTube. <laughs> the stuff that That's takes true. off on YouTube is always the quality stuff just putting it out there. I take it very seriously. But yeah, I thought I would show you like a video that I'm working on right now. Kind of my, it's like 90% done being edited. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I thought I'd just kind of show you like what it looks like when I edit something and the way that I, I use ScreenFlow to edit. So the way that I edit things, um, the kind of system that I have for importing into YouTube. And then we use, teamwork projects and that's how I like organize all the steps that I have to take to make every video. Our goal right now is to make every video as high quality and as professional looking and sounding as possible. Mm -hmm. um, 
and just really like blow it out of the water. So we have, I have a lot of like individual steps that I take and project management is also something that I'm really like passionate about. So like having all of these steps set up for me in my geek mind is just like the most satisfying thing ever to look at and work with. So I hope that um, other people also find it interesting. But yeah, so the screen is up. Um, so let's see, so we have an intro. This is so weird. I don't I don't really know how to like walk through this in a way that's interesting, but for every video <laughs> we have an introduction where I kind of talk about like what we're gonna be talking about. And we have this uh -huh. really neat little animated uh, logo that plays at the beginning and then a music track that plays and fades out. I personally can't stand when I'm watching a tutorial and there's music playing throughout the tutorial. So I purposefully make sure that it fades out nicely and all you can hear is my amazing voice. Um, and what I like about ScreenFlow is like I can nest clips inside of other clips. So oh, if I have, you know, like, like this, these logos are all overlaid. Actually, this is nested inside of other things. So there's four elements that we're looking at here and they're all uh -huh. nested inside of each other, but I can't stand like when I have all of these things stacked on top of each other like that. Like I'm very specific about trying to keep all of this stuff very clean. Um, it really doesn't matter, but it matters a lot to me. Um, we have things like annotations, which allows me to like put little shapes and like draw your attention to, um, you know, certain values and things like that. We use for every, for every clip where I am actually like showing the, the watch or something, mm -hmm. I increase the size of the, um, of the mouse. And if I click on something, it has that little like radial thingy on right. it. And what's really cool is that I have in the side over here, these style presets. So I have a WP Buffs one and I can just highlight every single screen recording that I have and choose that. And it applies the same cursor style and click style to all of them at the oh, same time, right? which is, is a huge time saver. So are you using screen flow to do the screen cap as well? Yep, precisely. So like if I, this one I did do all of the, but say like I had another screen recording to do and I wanted to put it right here in this empty chunk, uh -huh. I would come up here, um, I could configure the recording. So I can either choose this screen or I can choose my other screen. I can have audio or no audio. Usually I do audio first and then screen recordings. That's just the way that I like to do it, but you can do both at the same time. And then it'll record and I do whatever I wanna do, blah, 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 blah. When I'm done, I stop it. And it'll actually just let me pop it right into the timeline. Right. And so now it's right here. Huh. So like, yeah, so it is super, super so fast. So can he- Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Kenny is asking, haven't heard of ScreenFlow. You like it better than Adobe Premiere and After Effects? That's a pretty obvious question. <laughs> um, I haven't used After Effects in ages and ages and ages, and I've never actually used Adobe Premiere. I learned to edit with Final Cut Pro, ah. which is just, for what I'm doing, is way too intense. Like, there's so much to that program that it's kind of hard to like zero in and actually do what you have to do. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really remember a lot about After Effects, to be honest with you, to compare, but for what I'm doing, which is popping my voice in, popping the screens in, and then, you know, doing things like having a little zoom so mm -hmm. that I can, you know, show particular areas. To do those sorts of things, it does everything that I needed to do and very quickly and very, systematically like that preset that I have almost everything in here I can set a preset for and then apply that style without having to do it every single time which in my mind the key to professionalism is consistency so if I can make these videos as consistent visually and auditorially auditorially 
sound wise <laughs> as possible <laughs> um then to me like that is that's what's going to make them look really professional and tight and neat and like keep people wanting to watch them yeah um and my colleague uh ray he also uses ScreenFlow when he's editing stuff like this i think yeah. that's the first place i heard of it and yeah i I, I'd never heard of it before I started this job. And uh, Joe Howard, my boss, was like, I think you should use ScreenFlow for this. And I was like, okay. So I took, I think, like two hours and I watched all their tutorials and I played with it. And this is, I think, video number five that I'm making. And I feel like extremely confident in, in using it. Um, I'm sure there are things that I haven't figured out about it yet. But I mean, if you're making screen tutorials, I think it's, Hey, there's Joe. Um, I think it's pretty perfect. <laughs> All looks wow. like they like what you're doing. <laughs> anyway, yeah, let's so. let's continue. So cool, I cool, totally cool. derailed you. <laughs> That's okay. Um, but yeah, I spend a good amount of time like really sitting here and being like, okay, like here's a zoom. What exactly do I want that zoom to look like? Like I want it to be perfectly kind of lined up here along the corners and like making everything look very neat and very smooth and very intentional. Um, what else? See, these are bugging me. I have to get rid of them. But yeah, I don't know what else. I mean, we have like, so this is another good example of like having style presets. So every section of every video has like a little title screen. So you can kind of flip, scrub along through the video on YouTube and be like, okay, which section do I want to watch? And for me to just go ahead and create a new one of these, let's see. No, no, no. Yeah, I just like go into the text thing and I can add either title card text or what I consider normal hmm. text if I'm just showing you know, something that's, all the titles look exactly the same. If it's not a title, I use a different font for it. Um, and yeah, it just saves me, it saves me a lot of time once you kind of like know what styles you're going after. Um, so are you suggesting that planning in advance and having structure and consistency is a good thing then? Yeah, is that a true question? <laughs> <laughs> a thousand percent. I spent, when I first started making these videos, I spent a full two weeks figuring out exactly how I wanted to go through every video, like from mm -hmm. conceptualizing and, and, you know, writing an outline to publishing it and then post publishing, like, what do we do with the video after it's live? I spent a full two weeks learning ScreenFlow, figuring out what I wanted that system to be. And now I can push out a video in like two days. And I think that, especially for something like this, it's the kind of like measure twice, cut once mentality, mm -hmm. where if you create a really, really great first video, you can then just reiterate on that with new content and have it be good every single time. Um, so yeah, 100% having a plan, planning it out. So like I write an outline, which I could show you what those look like. I write an outline which has like overall kind of concepts of each section. So this was the outline for, yeah. this was the outline for my first video that I made. Mm -hmm. So like, I actually learned this um, from currently, actually I'm gonna restart that process in a couple of weeks, but I'm currently working on my first uh, LinkedIn learning video. Oh yeah, and, right. Yeah, and what I'm <laughs> learning from them is that, or what I learned from them is like the way that they organize like their videos, I kind of stole some ideas from that. So for every video, I have it broken down into sections. I have a main takeaway or a couple of main takeaways from that section. So like, what is it that I want the person to learn? And then what am I gonna show like visually? Like what visual aids might I need? What, um, you know, what do I need to record myself doing? What like, um, what do you call it? Like stock photos might I need, all of that sort of stuff. Um, what links am I gonna have to link to down in the description? Like what tools am I mentioning? Um, and get a high level understanding of what I need to do. Joe and I work together to get affiliate links together. And then when that is, when I feel like good and confident about that, I will grab another document. 
which I accidentally closed my tab, so I have to open it again. But I will write an actual script for myself because to me, and I think this is probably like not everybody needs this, but for me, again, with my like theater training, I, I need to have a script. I need to have something mm -hmm. to at least start from, if, even if I like kind of change around the words or how I say it or whatever. Um, but I literally write out every single word so that I don't forget anything and I include everything that I want. Um, and I go into more depth with the, with the visual aids that I wanna include. Um, and then this is what I follow along with as I'm as I'm recording. So you're basically making a paper edit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just literally like, yeah, this is what it looks like when a video editor makes a script. It, is, it yeah. becomes it's a paper almost, edit of the script. Yeah, I, and I kind of think of it too, almost like, um, what do you call it in like in animation, like a storyboard almost. Yeah. Like it, this is just short of me actually writing out a storyboard for the entire video, which I think that might be overkill. But yeah, I go through this whole thing um i record and i dump all those files into here um and then at the very end we have like more outro music i always have a 20 second blank end card which is where like the clickable elements will go in in youtube so mm -hmm. like our little button to subscribe suggested next video um and i export it as like high quality as i possibly can um let's see if i want to export this one this one all the way done <laughs> so I, can show you, I can show you what it looks like when i actually like upload it to youtube because that part is kind of fun there's a lot of steps so oh my gosh wait sidebar i've discovered this um musician called jonathan young and that's what I've been listening to as I've been recording and like writing videos and like editing because uh -huh. he does rock and metal covers of all kinds of stuff. But he has this whole series of Disney songs, which like, and he has this like villains album. If anybody likes Disney and they like metal, this is the most amazing person ever. Anyway. You know, it's fascinating. I'm like, <laughs> I'm encountering more and more people outing themselves as metal fans these days. People you would never think. And it's my friend it, Ebony is getting me into metal and uh it warms yeah, my fun. heart that people are starting <laughs> to understand that metal is quality music. <laughs> yeah. Like this this cover of, of This is Halloween from my Remember for Christmas. This is like this is a good gateway drug into metal, I think. I don't know a lot about like the technical specifications of what is and isn't good metal, but this has gotten me curious about like, man, maybe I should listen to more metal. Anyway. <laughs> Quite the um, sidebar. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is good. This is the kind of sidebar I provide in our team meetings. Everyone's like, I'm why is Morton talking about music? <laughs> I'm so fascinated by like what people listen to while they're working. Like that to me is very interesting. So I thought I would share that. Um, I am very particular about file structure and like how I organize my files. So this is my, this is where all my video stuff lives. Right. Um, complete video. So I edit our tutorials, but also the WP MRR podcast. We've been starting to upload our podcast episodes to YouTube as well. So those are in here. Um, let's go for, I'll just upload like one that's technically already, uh, already uploaded just to show you. And what I didn't know about YouTube is that you can set a um, kind of templated description for all of your YouTube videos, which is kind of amazing. So I would edit the title, I would add the title down here. I usually take that first intro section of my videos, which is like this bit right here, which is kind of like my introductory paragraph to my mm -hmm. essay of whatever this video is about, that will go in this first section, I always provide timestamps of the videos so I can actually show an example of that. It's, I don't know about you, but I hate watching a tutorial that's like 11 minutes long and I only need one piece of information. Mm -hmm. So I'll go through and I'll figure out exactly where each piece of information begins 
in the length of the video. And YouTube will automatically create this into a timestamp link. So if you click on this, it'll go right to that part in the video. Oh, which, what I, that's yeah. nice. It used to so not be I, automatic. It was quite hellish. Yeah, it's automatic <laughs> now. So like this one, which was the first one I published, when you come into here, if I just want to learn about this, it takes me right to 350. Nice. Isn't that fun? So yeah, I when I realized I could do that, it was kind of a big deal. Um, and yeah, we have our kind of boilerplate copy. We add our, you know, anything I linked to in the video. Um, and then the part that I find really fun is creating now another um, another project for myself. So these are all like all of our upcoming videos. So I created these in advance, but with teamwork projects, which is what this program is, um, you can create templated task lists for yourself. Mm -hmm. So I can come in here and say, okay, I have another YouTube video to work on um, for this overall project, which is the YouTube channel. So I'd go to add a task list, go to advanced. We have all of these various templates for all of these various things that we do. YouTube video creation is right here. And it includes every single task and subtask that I need to do for this video. Or for this like next iteration of video. Right. And it takes a few seconds, but, and what I like about this is like, it's super easy to go in and edit the template. So while I was spending that first two weeks, like creating a new, or like creating my process of figuring out how to do these videos, I would have a little like sticky note where I'd be like, all the things I need to change about the template to make the template more efficient. And mm -hmm. I'm still doing that, like iterating on what my processes are. Um, and every single step is right here. And we have like tons of sub steps of like, I accidentally uploaded some videos where the aspect ratio was wrong. So I had to change, <laughs> like literally add a step for myself to make sure the aspect ratio is right. Um, oh my God, that is so detailed. <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> see I'm, my checklist is like published video on the internet. Yeah, the end. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the kind of person where I am absent-minded. Like I, I have to just kind of embrace it. Like I will forget something unless it's written down. Like I'm surrounded by sticky notes. Everything is in my calendar. If it's not on the calendar, it's not going to happen. I send myself emails sometimes just to like make sure that it's somewhere. Like. I have to write everything down and especially with something that's so that needs to be kind of like perfect every single time. Mm -hmm. This is so helpful. And I feel like I would do this when I had my own design business and I would write blog posts. I had a system like this because I wanted every single thing that I put out in on the internet that represented me. Like I wanted it to be, you know, there is no perfect but I wanted it to be perfect. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, putting things out like this that represent not only my company, but represent like the WordPress community as a whole, I want it to be perfect. Like I want, if I meet somebody and they're scared to use WordPress for the first time, I want to confidently tell them there's all these resources out there that you can use and tutorials that are really going to be helpful for, for you. And I don't want them to find one of mine and have it be crappy. Like <laughs> I want them to be like, wow, this is amazing. I can totally do this, you know? Yeah. And so this is kind of where it starts is like having specific steps for like every single thing that I do that I have to check off. Um, and so I can feel confident when I actually publish it. I'm not like nervous. Like, did I forget something, you know? Yeah, no, it's, I, I greatly admire anyone who's able to make a system and stick to it. My problem is I can make the system, but I don't <laughs> stick to it because I'm too absent minded. Uh, but it's, I mean, this is, the way, especially if you're working on something with other people mm. and there are multiple people involved who may be have to do things to like, there might be other people who need to look at things or need to uh, have input on things or need to do things for you to be able to do other things and having mm. some form of planning tool is super important. Yeah, and, that's, and I kept that in mind when I was designing this, like, okay, like if I get hit by a bus or something and somebody else on the team needs to go through and and keep the, the channel going that's what i think about if i get hit by a bus yeah. um but well you know, redundancy yeah, factor is important i mean we've all learned over the past couple of months that uh things happen that are out of our control and we need to be able yeah. to keep going 
And, you know, in the future, if we if we're growing this channel and we have a team working on it, I'd like to be able to have instead of me sitting there for hours having to teach somebody what's only in my head, like having it all documented is incredibly mm -hmm. helpful. Um, so actually, right now, I need to update this because we have a series of like post publishing, like the last step is create the next project and close out this project. But I need to actually add a a list of post publishing steps that go in this template. So it's also the kind of thing of like, yeah, I want it to be perfect, but I know I'm always going to be iterating on it and mm -hmm. adding things to it. And like, I think it's important, like when you're developing systems to kind of keep that balance in mind of like, yeah, I want to strive for it to be perfect, but I don't want to completely cut myself off at the knees and like not be open to the idea of changing things if I have to, or, you know, being flexible with it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm really proud of this like system that I set up and yeah, it makes it so that I can confidently create videos and publish them. And, you know, I yeah. think a lot of people get nervous. Like I used to get so nervous, like publishing a blog post because I'm like, I, like, I, I don't know if people are going to think it's good or, you know, all that nonsense. Um, and so I think like, if you ever have that kind of, my fiance calls it analysis paralysis, where you're constantly thinking about thinking about it and wanting it to be good and good and good. And so you never do it, you never finish it, you never show it to anybody. Um, but if you have like a system, you can give yourself that confidence to actually release something and it's very helpful. Yeah, and you'll be able to, you know, especially if you're working in a setting where you're an employee or you're on a team, at some mm -hmm. point someone's gonna ask you, how are you spending your time? And then it can be like, look yeah. here. A breakdown of it it's exactly and that's this. the great thing about teamwork projects is i this is how i track my time during the day like how i get paid uh -huh. so not only that but like i can go back which i intend to do at some point in the next few weeks like i can go and see like okay how long does it take me to make every video like exactly how many hours does it take me to make a video am i getting faster like is video number one take the video number one take more time than video number 10 mm -hmm. and if not, I have to figure out why. Um, but yeah, it's really useful to be able to, yeah, look back in time and see how you did and how you're improving and where you can still improve and all that great stuff. Insights. Yeah. <laughs> Self-reflection, all the important things. For sure. So yeah. I think, um, I think this is super interesting. Thanks. So it, the last thing, because, you know, I, I play around with YouTube every once in a while, but I never do it properly. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't I don't want to dedicate enough time to it. Um, but you you're mentioning the overlay things at the end of the movies, right? Mm -hmm. um, so can you so like, talk a little bit about how you think about that and how you approach it? Sure. Um, it's they're pretty straightforward. So like if I go in here and it's probably a faster way to get here, but excuse. So when you have your video ready to go, it's called the end screen. Mm -hmm. So YouTube will automatically set it for the very last 20 seconds, which is why that screen is 20 seconds long. And it kind of sucks that you can't, as far as, oh, you can make it a little shorter, but you can't make it longer. longer yeah. Um, but yeah, you can choose, um, let's see. Yeah, you can choose to display like a playlist or like you can move these around. And like, I'm sure anyone who has watched a YouTube video has seen like these things at the end here. Um, and because this channel is really new, I haven't honestly given too much thought to this like recommended video. Right now I have most recent upload, but you can set it to like whatever YouTube thinks would be best for the viewer. Best for which is, the viewer. That's quite I interesting don't. language. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know how it, well, I guess I know how it knows that YouTube is owned by Google, so they know, you know. But does Google really do know day. what's best for you? <laughs> it's very big brother isn't it? Um, or you can just choose a specific video, which is kind of neat. So like I could say, well, you know, this video is most closely related in context to the, this video, so I can choose which one is being recommended. Right. Um, but right now I just choose the most recent upload. Um, like send is dynamic, so then it'll change. Yeah. As you keep publishing things, so that people will exactly. always see the newest one. But the idea is to like create this kind of loop where people just want to keep, you know, like oh, I'll watch the next one, I'll watch the next one, and they'll, mm -hmm. you know, keep watching. I don't know how 
Um, I don't know how useful that is for our channel, to be perfectly honest with you, because it's a tutorial channel. I imagine people are coming to this video to solve a specific, you know, problem that they have. And so it's like, okay, well, I'm going to go finish solving my problem now. Like, I'm not going to sit and watch another 10 minute video. Um, but who knows? It might, this video might solve the next problem that they have. And so they'll come back. Um, but yeah, YouTube just does it automatically, which is pretty neat. I just have to make sure that I always save this bit of empty space. Otherwise it'll plaster itself over right. my like tutorial of what I'm doing. So yeah, did that answer your question? Yeah, it did. <laughs> uh, it's, it, cool. it, it's just fascinating to me because we, uh, my wife had a YouTube channel a long time ago. Like, mm -hmm. let's see, at least 10 years ago, right? Oh, so, wow. Like in the very beginning and mm -hmm. it was, uh, it was very popular, but there were no tools. So mm. we had to, the, in the beginning, there was no way of providing links anywhere. So in the description wow. field, there was just a text field, right? So you had to actually burn in graphics and everything. And then eventually they introduced this ability to put these boxes that you could then put content into. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was extremely tedious and clunky and weird to get around to. And now, you know, many years later, the technology is so advanced and it's so simple. And you have like, you have the end cards, but you also have an ability to put cards on top in the middle of movies, mm -hmm. right? And you can- Yeah, like I haven't played with the cards too much because I don't, I personally don't like there being a lot of like clutter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but and, like, things, things like that. Popping up. Yeah, things like this are are pretty handy. If you know, if 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 I'm talking about, oh, okay, go in through FTP and make this change, I might want to put a suggested video on like how to use FTP yeah. or you know something like that. That might be really helpful. But you know, right now we have four videos on the on the on the channel, so this is definitely like as we get more content, I think would be really cool. And it it kind of stinks so that you can't, um, you can only it looks like link to your own content. Mm -hmm. Like I would love to be able to link to like a WP beginner article or something that's right. related to what I'm doing. Like that would be so neat. Um, but I don't think it lets me do that. I don't know. It might be, Oh, I, I think it might be something you need to be yeah, a partner. So you partner. need to become popular first. And then once you're popular, yeah. <laughs> you get to do all the things that would, because otherwise it would Make just be exploited popular. by people. It becomes link. Say, that's like, true. That's People abuse it to get to things or to downlink things or whatever. The other cool thing I noticed, uh, which I think is pretty new, well, you can add subtitles, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can add like closed captions, which we use um, rev.com for captioning. And what I didn't realize was that if you are watching a video, yeah, so if I go here and we have captions on this video, you can go to these little dots over here and you can actually get a full transcript mm -hmm. over here with the captions. I had no idea. And then you can click on it and you go directly to where that is. Yeah. Like yeah, it's super I think cool. That's just the neatest, the neatest thing ever because we were ordering captions and transcripts. And then I sort of realized like, I don't actually need the transcript because it's the it same thing. Good job, YouTube. Yeah. It's uh, really cool. You know, we have that on LinkedIn Learning too. <laughs> yeah, it's very nice. it's very important because you often watch a video and then your brain will remember a sentence or a phrase, maybe mm. like a way someone said something, and you're like, "Where is that in the video?" Yeah, and the ability to then do a search for a phrase and go directly to it. That's amazing. Is, and especially because this works with the auto captioning too. So if you uh, like w the video that we're recording right now eventually will go up on YouTube or it, it's on YouTube right now, but it'll eventually get auto captioning and the auto captioning mm -hmm. will understand what you're saying. It will not understand what I'm saying for unknown reasons. So <laughs> mine will be terrible. Yours will be very nice. Uh, and if someone then comes to this video and they go, Oh, I remember watching that. And then at some point, Ali said, whatever, they can go and search and find that spot within the huge video. Uh, yeah. That's and it awesome. allows Google to index the entire video content, right? That's probably yeah. why they did it so that they can mm -hmm. index it. And then someone can go in and either add proper captions, like edit it to make it perfect, or they can mm -hmm. go in and make like Spanish translation or French translation oh. or Japanese translation or whatever. That'd be awesome. 
So it's, yeah, that is it's pretty very cool. advanced. I love it. I, until I started doing this, I had no idea that it, it like created this transcript. It blew my mind. Um, yeah, that also like, that's also another like cool thing of running this channel for me is like, I got like, so a couple years ago when I was running my own business, I started a YouTube channel, basically doing the same thing. It still exists. And I stopped making videos cause it was just, it's a ton of work. Mm -hmm. Like it's a job and I couldn't do my job plus run a YouTube channel. It was just too much. Um, and one of the things I always wanted was to have my own captions because the auto generated ones are fine, but they're not perfect. And I wanted to be able to prioritize that. So it's really great to work somewhere where I like turn to Joe and I'm like, we need captions. And for the podcast, we need transcripts. And he's just like, okay. Like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's and, just done. and that's and, an ev evolution in our community, like in yeah, the web community I as a whole, it. because like four years ago when uh, like the accessibility community started saying, you know, it's great that you publish all these videos and, and all these podcasts, but you're not publishing any transcripts for it. And that's uh, yeah. not great. And then they were like, but so much money. And I think there was, at some point, there was a break point where people realized, wait, if we have the transcript, it becomes searchable, both for people who go in and they can like search content, but also for search engines. So there's a huge benefit to it. And then there was this massive shift that happened probably in the last two years where social media applications started muting videos by default, mm -hmm. right? So if you go to Instagram or YouTube, no, Instagram or Facebook or yeah. LinkedIn or anything, and there's a video playing, it's always muted because otherwise it would mm -hmm. be hellish. <laughs> and because of that, everyone started burning captions in, right? And that's why you yeah. get those videos now that have like really fancy graphics mm -hmm. that are captions. And that just broke the whole idea that people had that, oh, captions are expensive. They all of a sudden went, no, captions are super valuable because otherwise people don't yeah. get our content. Exactly. And so but yeah, it's it's I'm really glad that like I'm around and I'm doing stuff like this in a time where, yeah, the captions, it's a thing. People want them, they're asking for them, and it's becoming a, a standard, like even outside of like what you're talking about. Like I was talking to somebody on Twitter the other day and she was just sort of like, you know, if if somebody asked me to be on their podcast and there's no transcript, I'm not doing it. Yeah. Like we have to set the standard and make it make it a norm. Um, and so it's nice to be able to kind of contribute to that, like one more channel out there that has captions, that has transcripts. Um, and hopefully, you know, everyone will follow and the few that don't have them yet will kind of catch on to full disclosure this is a live stream <laughs> whatever <laughs> captions appear will be entirely auto generated uh no worry eventually sometime in the future when i have a proper podcast or whatever i would probably i would spend <laughs> the money on it i actually paid someone to caption one of my uh wordpress.tv talks ones mm -hmm. because i was so frustrated with their not being captions. I was like, I wonder how much it costs. So I just sent it out to get captioned and it came mm -hmm. back and it, it was, it costs money, but it costs less money than you think. Yeah. And it's, and it's in this grand scheme of things. It's like you spend how much money on cupcakes for lunch for this <laughs> conference and you can't spend the money to caption it. That seems unreasonable to me. I'd forego <laughs> cupcakes for captions. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, okay, that's a little extreme, but well, you know, maybe let's have. I forgo the second swag bag for a coffee. Okay, bag. <laughs> that's fair. The the second bag full of pens when I'm yes. swimming in WordPress branded pens. I have pens for companies that I've I have never patronized or even like visited their website. It's insane. Um, I don't know what this is. What else I should should show you? I think I think you showed us a lot. I'm really yeah. <laughs> what is it? Link Ray is like putting in some incredibly long URL. Thanks, Ray. So just copy what you see on the screen right now, and you'll. <laughs> what is this? I just opened up the comments thing. I had it on private chat the whole time. It's a lifetime deal for sixty nine dollars for two hours. So yeah, just copy the link you see on the screen right now. It's easy enough, right? <laughs> Just type it in, and then you'll get a lifetime subscription. <laughs> uh, 
eventually, like right after we go off the air, Ray will have a short link for us. And then okay. no one will ever get it. <laughs> That's how it works. I'll put it in the description, OK? <laughs> Awesome. But um, this was great, Lally. I really appreciate you coming on and showing us this because it's super of cool. Of course. Thanks. Yeah, it's incredibly fun for me. And like, I'm glad you found it entertaining. <laughs> it was very entertaining and educational and informative, which is why I'm doing this. So great. thank you for coming. Uh, if you're watching this, other people, and you go, hey, I have something I want to show and tell. And it could literally be anything. Cat acrobatics, Excel spreadsheets, photography. So I had a guy on talk about how he renovated his van. If you have something you want to show and tell, this is the place to do it. So just contact me on LinkedIn or, oh yeah, Ali has a feline companion sitting there going, why are you looking at me? Stop <laughs> looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> see, 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 see. Here's the short link. <laughs> nice. This is why it's a oh, live thanks, stream. Rochelle. I love that it's a live stream because then we can actually get what she's saying. Great show. Ali is so awesome. Ali is awesome. That's Aww. why she's on the show. Not to say that you all are not awesome and should not be on the show, but you know, <laughs> Ali is an awesome person. I totally agree. Um, so yeah, if you want to be on the show, hit me up on a social network and I'll make it happen. Uh, if not, just tune in again. This show airs at random times, at <laughs> random lengths on LinkedIn and YouTube. So, you know, just follow me and then eventually something will show up. <laughs> so thank you very much, Ali. And I will hit the thank end you. broadcast button and we'll see each other at some point in the future. Yes, we will.